All right, give it up for Steven, everybody. Let's throw this down. How are we doing tonight, guys? Yeah, I'm not doing so good. I recently got a haircut. That's not that bad in itself, but every time I get a haircut, the same friend pops out of a different closet and tells me I look like a snapping turtle with stage four cancer. It's fucked up. I gotta get new friends. I gotta stop posting also that I'm getting a haircut on Facebook. I think that's how it keeps finding me. Yeah. You guys want to hear a country song I've been working on? Kind of... Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here it goes. I got a little ass head and a slightly bigger torso. Some pretty broad shoulders and a long ass fucking neck. That's all I got so far. I'm still working on it, so... If you guys like it, find me after the show. Give me some ideas. Yeah. Anybody from Tacoma? Yeah. Yeah. I'm from Tacoma. If you didn't need any more proof of that by looking at me, I had three felonies by the time I was nine. <laughs> it just happens when you're born in Tacoma. On McKinley. Yeah. If you know where McKinley's at, you know when you get to about 60 of the McKinley, you'll always see a woman sucking her own titty. <laughs> And if you're from Tacoma, you've seen that many a times because she's always there. But the crazy thing is, this one time, she was smoking a cigarette. So, in my head, I was like, what's that transaction looking like? Okay, you're sucking your own titty, and then you're hitting a cigarette? So you're taking the tit out of your mouth to hit the cigarette. If I wasn't late for work, I would try to stop and have a conversation with her because it's like, those are the kind of people that you want to have a conversation with. <laughs> and there was a daycare right there. Take it from me, if you're sucking your own titty outside of daycare, you will catch a felony. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. And she's gonna get nipple cancer from that, and I don't, I don't want that for her, you know? Yeah, the coma, man, give it up. I got stabbed one time by a white guy with face tattoos. Anybody ever had that happen? No, just me? It sucks. I swear, white guys with the face tattoos, they're like the least untrustworthy people on the planet. Okay? Take it from me. I went, I seen him smoking meth, so I should have known better, right? He was outside the Chevron, he was smoking meth. I went inside to pull out rent money from the ATM. He followed me in. He's right over my shoulder, watching me pull out all this money. And I, I puckered up a little bit. I was like, I might get stabbed here. But I'm not no bitch, okay? So I stood my ground. He's like, hey, you got $20? I need it for gas. I got a dead body in the trunk. I was like, whoa, dude. But like I said, I'm not no punk. So I, I stepped beside him. I looked outside. I was like, dude, you don't even have a fucking car. Maybe if you had a car, I might be inclined to give you 20 bucks. And then he stabbed me. <laughs> so next time you think about holding your pride, you know, being prideful in a situation like that, just don't. You will get stabbed. It's not fun. Yeah. We got any trade workers in the house? Woo! Woo! What do you do? You got an iron, we got an iron worker out here? I do underground utilities. Underground what? Utilities. Utilities? Okay. You ever drive past a job site with your significant other be like, hey, I, I built that back in, you know, 2017. Yeah. That's the same feeling I get when I drive past a house that I used to rob. <laughs> Not good. Uh, that's been my time, I think, tonight, guys. Uh, give it up for me and all the other comics tonight. They're trying their best. You can find me at CB fucking up Instagram so you can follow all my bad life decisions. Have a good night. Give it up for Steven Ryan, everybody. The first time you got introduced in Tacoma, I thought they said Steven Wright. Do you guys know who that comic is? I was highly disappointed when he showed up. <laughs> Ha 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 ha!
He's my friend, I'm allowed to say that. All right, we're gonna bring some color up here now. Uh, this has been a little white so far. And a little Asian. So we're gonna get a little darker. With my boy, Marcus Briggs. Y'all are not ready. <laughs> What's going down, everybody good? Yeah. Having a good time? Yeah. Yeah? I, I really did not know what I was getting myself into coming out here, man. Um, there's a lot of nice cars, and I didn't even wash mine. <laughs> so I'm feeling a little little bit of pressure, so you guys gotta laugh at me, or you're gonna make me feel bad even, even more bad. Um, yeah, I, I currently I, uh, I live in Tacoma. Uh, I'm not originally from there. Um, I'm originally from the South. Uh, end of Seattle, so it wasn't really a big trip. I didn't really have to migrate a whole lot. There was no Greyhound or anything. Y'all remember Greyhounds? No? I wasn't asking you, Mr. Truck. Uh, but yeah, man, I've been living in Tacoma for a little bit now, and uh, I think I've uh, finally experienced the Tacoma Trifecta, is what it was. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Tacoma Trifecta, um, uh, but what happened is, uh, yeah, I had my, uh, I came up missing with a catalytic converter. Yeah, that was a thing. Um, what was my, other, man, I had three things that happened and I'm, I'm forgetting one of them. God damn it, hold that thought. Never mind, we're going on to number three. Uh, the third thing was, uh, I actually uh, was sexually assaulted. That's why it sticks out. Uh, it was, it was at 7-Eleven. Uh, Still working things out. It's still a lot of uh, trauma. Uh, still going through some therapy. Uh, what I can tell you is uh, there was a homeless man on the side of 7-Eleven uh, making some very, very aggressive eye contact uh, while he was masturbating. So I'm pretty confident that that's uh, sexual assault. Uh, I was rattled. I don't know if any of you guys ever ever uh, drove up on anything like that. And I just came to get some lotto tickets and and some swishers. So uh, having my man show up over there like that, there, that was not not cool. I was stunned, actually. Uh, ah. <laughs> Y'all caught it, right? I, it took me a second. I had to get myself together. You're not helping. Uh, I had to get myself together. Right, because uh, yeah, I look like a sex doll, and that's not the look you want uh, when someone is masturbating uh, near a 7-Eleven. I, I just didn't anticipate it at 7-Eleven. I was thinking maybe like a Piggly Wiggly. You know, that kind of sounds like masturbation. You could, you would, you would anticipate that there a little bit. Uh, yeah, man, I was fucked up though, man. I went on in there and got my lotto ticket and, and my switchers though, and I just felt dirty. I just felt dirty. I. I and I'm trying to imagine how he must have felt, though. I mean, that had to be crazy, right? Because if you and I were sitting in our living room masturbating, and some guy drove up looking in the window, that'd be some fucked up shit. <laughs> I, personally, that you know, I'd be uncomfortable. I'm not sure I'd be able to finish. Is what I'm saying. That might might not end uh, right for me. Uh, any fans of Dateline? Dateline? Yeah, couple, couple, three. I love Dateline, man. I'm, I am borderline addicted to Dateline. Uh, the, the only drawback, though, really, is it messed up uh, the regular news for me. The regular news, I can't watch it like I used to, because now I just watch it. I'm, I'm waiting for the twist. Right? And they'll be like, yeah, we're going to send uh, Katie Kirk down here, and she's going to talk to these people, and they're going to get the real story. They're going to find out what happened with this mass murder. And I'm at home, like... I think Katie did it. <laughs> right? And then I know I, I, I just watch too much Dateline because my next thought typically is like, I could get away with murder. <laughs> I, I mean, it's kind of a how-to, right? I mean, there's not a lot to it. Don't have any fucked up pictures of yourself out there. That's number one because they find those really quick. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, things like that, uh, DNA and all that kind of stuff. Man, I can bring it down for you. If you guys have some time, anybody planning a murder in the next 30 days or so, let me know. I, I got some tips for you. If we can meet quietly. <laughs> just a thought, just a thought. I'm trying to work on my side hustle. Uh, 
But yeah, man, I'm about to get out of you guys here. I'm gonna wrap it up. Uh, what I wanted to share though, really quickly, and I'm gonna need y'all's help, right? I got a uh, three-year-old that's starting stand-up. Okay, she's got a, a killer closer joke. But I need you guys to help me with it, right? All right? Knock, knock. Daisy. They see me rolling. It's really cute by three-year-old. 55, not as cute. But uh, my name is Marcus, y'all. I've been here. It's been my pleasure. Thank you. Keep it going for Marcus, everyone. All right, we got a special guest right now. One of our feature comics. She opens for other comics, so if you go to Tacoma Comedy Club and it's super funny, so you might have recognized her. This is Lynette Manning, everyone. So let's get it going. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Kent, Washington, I am excited to be out on a Friday night. I'll tell you what. I got a little boy at home. We've been married for 20 years. Yeah, I'm fighting with my husband, okay? We had an argument before we got here. I'm, I'm a little irritated, okay? He was trying to do something nice, and he fucked it up, okay? He was like, babe, I did laundry. I said, cool, what'd you wash? He's like, I washed your jeans and your big shirts. And I was like, well, I just call them shirts, but okay, what the fuck? What does that mean? What does that mean? I do get to travel. I'm up here from Olympia. I got a brand new car. It's got that smart car technology, and I'm really taking in all these classic cars here, because if y'all got a new car and, and you got that smart car technology, you feel like me, I miss my old dumbass car that doesn't question my authority all the time. Okay? These new cars are constantly beeping at you, you know? You get too close to the line, boop. get too close to the car in front of you, boop. take your hand off the wheel to grab something. Boop. Other day, I got a little tired. The car could tell. It went, boop. screen said, do you need a break? I'm like, bitch, we need a break. Okay? I parked it for two days. It's not a good start to our 84-month relationship. You know? It's not. Get to fly place. This year I went to South Dakota. I was there in January. It was cold, and I did not have the nipples for it. Okay? Some women have perfect perky nipples when it's cold out, and that ain't me. Okay? When I stepped off that plane in that seven-degree weather, my boobs did not look like Pamela Anderson from Baywatch. No, they did. They look like crazy eyes from Orange is the New Black, okay? <laughs> one was looking that way, one was looking that way. It's confusing. It's confusing. We got to New York City. I've never been there before, man. I thought the coolest thing I was going to see in New York was a Statue of Liberty, Ground Zero, Empire State Building. No. The coolest thing I saw in New York City was this guy walking really fast, and then he tripped on a pigeon. <laughs> I've never seen that before in my life, man. Uh, you know, but the longer I was in the city, the more I realized, I don't like big city life. I like small towns, okay? Uh, I befriended a comedian there in New York, much younger than myself, sweet young man. He texted me the other day. He said he was worried because he read that women in Seattle were getting attacked. And the attacks were happening between the hours of midnight and 6 a.m. And I texted him back immediately. I said, you don't need to worry about me. You will never find my ass in Seattle between the hours of midnight and 6 a.m., right? If you find my body in Seattle between the hours of midnight and 6 a.m., that is where they dumped it. That is, not, that is not where the murder took place, okay? It's likely it took place in my home between the hours of 7 p.m. and 8 p.m., okay? That's when that happens. I like smaller towns. I went to Shelton. You guys know Shelton up here, yeah? Okay, a little logging town on the peninsula, Shelton over there. I did a show at a racetrack. I thought that sounded real cool, right? I put the address in my GPS. On the way out there, I didn't see a single sign that said racetrack. I saw a bunch of signs that said correctional facility. <laughs> okay, sure enough, this racetrack is right next door to Washington Correctional Facility. Does that seem like good placement to you? Right? Is it wise to have a prison right next door to some of the fastest vehicles in our state? Right? And you know they play country music at that racetrack. Can you imagine being a prisoner? Every Friday you gotta hear them playing Rascal Flats, Fast Cars, and Freedom next door. 
would be awful, man. I said that joke in Shelton and the entire room got quiet. <laughs> and I don't know if it's because they didn't understand what the problem was or they were just figuring out what the problem was, you know? <laughs> Good people, man. What I like most about small towns, people in small towns say things like it is. I like that. I respect that, you know? I took my family to Southwest Washington Fair in Chehalis last summer, and this lady was showing her animals. She was real proud, right? And so one came hobbling up, and I will never forget this, because it made an impact on me. She said, up next, this heifer's been giving me a lot of guff. She's got a little hitch in her giddy up, but I think come spring, she gonna loosen up, start throwing some calves to the ground, real nice. Okay, I was taken back, then I thought to myself, you know, what a nice compliment. This heifer's got a little hitch in her giddy up. But come spring, she gonna loosen up, start throwing some calves to the ground, real nice. Like, I wonder if my husband thought that when he first saw me. I walk kind of funny. Yeah. I wonder if he was like, you know what, this big bitch got a limp, but um, I think I can loosen up, get some babies out of her come spring, real nice. Real nice. And he did. We had our son in May. It worked out. It's all real well. I do. I got a beautiful uh, son. He just turned terrible. And, um, you know, he turns three this year. He turned terrible last year. I am tired all the time. I look tired all the time. I went to get a coffee the other day. The barista said she liked my eyeshadow. <laughs> yeah, I don't wear eyeshadow, okay? I didn't know what to do, man. I was like, thanks. It's called Shades by Exhaustion. Um, you know, maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe my kid won't go to sleep. Right? Like, I'm not trying to be a cover girl. I'm just trying to recover, girl. You know? Just trying to bounce back. Just trying to, I hear you back there. Yes. I'm telling you, man. We had our kid a little late in life. My husband and I were getting older. Getting old hard. Living wild. Used to be staying out all night and partying. Now it's having something acidic after 8 p.m. with no tums in the house. Right? Other day, my husband told me his stomach hurt. I said, take some tums. He's like, I don't want to take any tums. I'm like, Motherfucker, die then. I don't know what you want from me, you know? I make fun of him a lot, my husband. I do. I do. He's a, my first husband was a beautiful man, beautiful Caucasian man. I like white dudes. That's my kink. Okay? My current husband hates when I say first husband because it's the same dude. Um, <laughs> never close the door all the way, you know? Keep your options open. Keep your options open. No, oh, he's great. He's awesome. I make fun of him because he's Caucasian. Because it's, one, it's easy. Two, it's funny. Three, he can't say anything back to me. Because that would be racist. Yes. Yeah. And that's fine. My, my son, my son took after his complexion. He looks nothing like me. Uh, I look like I kidnapped this child, okay? And I'm torn about that because when I look at my son, like, I know he's going to get a good job. <laughs> I'm just afraid he can't apply for the grants he needs for college, you know? That's my fear. That's my fear. I, mean, I like all kinds of guys, man. I like white dudes because they take you out, call, uh, show you all kinds of cool places like breweries and job sites they used to work at and um, <laughs> the raisins and potato salad. Like cool shit like that. I like that kind of stuff. I do. I do. He's awesome. He has a good sense of humor, my husband. You gotta have that when you're married to a comedian, because we mess around a lot, you know? I was, uh, <laughs> I, I had a competition not too long ago. I had three minutes to do my set. On the way out the door, I was like, babe, I gotta go. I got three minutes tonight. He was like, whoa, you're gonna need to explode in three minutes. How are you gonna do that? And I was like, I don't know. How do you do it? <laughs> Sometimes before we get started, I like to put one of those frozen burritos in the microwave. Yeah, so it's nice and hot by the time we're done. You know what I mean? You gotta you figure that out, shit out. Three minutes, perfect in the microwave. It's ready for you. It's ready for you. And don't feel bad for my husband. He claps back in his own way. We're in bed one night. Our big ass dog jumped on me. I was like, ugh, you're gonna have 120 pounds jump on you? My husband, without missing a beat, he goes, not since high school. <laughs> He's not wrong, you know? It's fine. It's fine. I was. I was on a weight loss journey, man. I got pregnant. And my weight loss journey turned more into a weight loss joyride. 
short and sweet. I, uh, I gained 50 pounds being pregnant with my son, and he had the audacity to come out six pounds, two ounces. I thought I was having a 35 pound baby, okay? I did. That's all right, I've been, you get profiled. I've been overweight most of my life. You get profiled when you're overweight. I was at the dentist, hygienist in my mouth, torturing me as they do. And then she says to me, oh, did you burn your mouth on something? I said, I probably did. She goes, like a pizza burn or something like that? I was like, snatch, it was a hot salad, thank you very much. <laughs> Get rude, you know? This one time I was at work, this lady was telling me all about her food allergies. I told her I didn't have a food I was allergic to. She said, well, I would say so. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even mad about that one. She's like an older lady, that was years ago. Hopefully she's dead now, so. <laughs> It's a problem that fixes itself, really. You think about it. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. I tell you, I talked about my husband's ethnicity. My, uh, myself, my family's originally from Guam. My dad, ex-military, been stateside all my life. And he's always on my case, though, to say, like, Islander jokes. He's like, Lynn, say Islander jokes. Say Islander jokes. And I'm like, Dad, you guys had me in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And you moved me to Olympia, Washington. Like, I can immerse for Island jokes at best, you know? <laughs> Not that I'm being racially profiled by your own father. That's a, that's a good time. I did see him profiled once, we are at the hospital. My mom was having surgery. Nurse came out to give us an update about how she was doing, and no joke, she looked at my dad, then she looked at me and said, oh, you must be his interpreter. <laughs> yeah. And looking back, I was actually really funny because her comment confused him so much, it looked like he didn't understand English for a moment. <laughs> My dad was like, what did she just say to me? <laughs> like super articulate, man. And the thing is, when people say stuff like that, I don't think they mean anything by it. I think they're just speaking before they think, right? Uh, one time I went out to dinner with a group of people, sat down, noticed everyone sitting there besides me with some variation of a redhead, right? They all have red hair. As soon as we noticed that, my friend's boyfriend leans across the table. He goes, hi, Lynette. What's it feel like to be the minority? I was like, it feels like Tuesday, Danny. Um, it's like Tuesday, dude. I tell you what, though, I'm a hypocrite because honestly, I will be whatever ethnicity gets me a benefit, okay? I will, I used to gamble a lot in my 20s. I go to a casino on a reservation. Sometimes I get some neat. One time, I went up to the counter, the lady asked me if I was native. Okay, now I sensed the discount, all right? So I said, yes, yes I am. But then she asked me for my tribal card, and my young dumbass said I left it in my canoe. <laughs> yeah. Needless to say, I did not get a discount that evening. <laughs> I did not. Did not. No, man, no. I started doing comedy because I put it on a bucket list of mine, where I like to do crazy shit. And one of the craziest things I've ever done was uh, I, I ran in a naked 5K, okay? Yes, it was a lovely nudist camp called, I don't like the way you're laughing, sir. <laughs> I actually do, you're white, you're cute. Um, so it was a lovely nudist camp, it's called Conixu Ranch, which is north of Spokane. Okay, so I made sure to drive my ass 320 miles to the east and 60 miles north into the woods before I unleash this into the world, okay? So as I mentioned, my weight's kind of fluctuated, right? So you gotta, you gotta love me to see this naked, all right? The brave friend of mine went with me to this race. We get to the gate, nice gentleman says, drive another mile, you'll see a parking attendant. We're like, okay. We see the parking attendant, and as we get closer, we see that he's wearing a flannel jacket and no pants, right? And my friend's car is pretty low to the ground. So, yes, as we get closer, this guy will look like in the window. <laughs> It was a windy day, okay? I'm gonna take a quick break and explain this to you guys recently because I never realized until recently that almost always when I perform, this is a black microphone, okay? Follow me with this, okay? I'm at a bar, I'm telling this joke, I do this deal. Dude in the back yells, was it a black dick? And I was taken back by that because it was not a black dick. And if you really think about it, a naked 5K is very much a white dick thing to do. <laughs> there wasn't a single black dick there. <laughs> I said that to my husband. He's like, well, white dicks don't move like that. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I see. 
So we're there, we're naked, right? And we get to the finish line, it's this beautiful scene. It's like sea of nakedness, just boobs and dicks all over the place. And I look at my friend, I get emotional, we walked most of it, I don't run, okay? And I said, hey, let's finish this real strong, let's run fast across that line. And she's like, okay. So we start running, man, everybody's looking at us, we're looking at everybody, and all of a sudden, I hear all this clapping. <laughs> Yeah, that wasn't the crowd, ladies and gentlemen. That was my ass, okay? My body learned how to cheer itself on that day. It sounded just like that. It sounded just like that. It's amazing, it's amazing. A lot of people ask me if my husband's cool with me doing a naked 5K, because he didn't go with me, and absolutely not, he's not cool with it, okay? But if he stopped me from doing what I want to do that made me happy, that'd be racist. So... <laughs> No, again, I told you, I gave my husband a lot of shit. We just celebrated 20 years, my husband and I, right? Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Uh, and you got to do fun stuff. I don't know how long everyone here has been with their partner, but you got to do fun stuff when you're with someone that long, man. We have this fun thing. We have passes for celebrities we're allowed to sleep with. Okay, husband's list, very innocent. He has like Charlize Theron, Mariah Carey, Selma Hayek, women that look like me. <laughs> Thank you. And, um... My list, though, I got like Mark Wahlberg, Justin Timberlake, and the cast of 300. <laughs> yeah. You've never seen the movie 300. I'm literally talking about 300 dudes, okay? I've seen it. You've seen it. <laughs> Hot, right? What's that? My Italian girlfriend has never seen that movie. You've never seen 300? No. See it alone, baby. See it alone. You don't want him anywhere near. Cheers. I'll tell you what. Cheers. <laughs> I'm gonna hang out with my yeah, yeah. That's awesome, man. That's great, man. And that's it, right? We love each other. You gotta do fun shit. You gotta fantasize, okay? I have a friend who's been married to her husband about the same amount of time. And recently, he bought her a sex toy so that she could fantasize about him whenever he was out of town. Isn't that cute? Aww, right? The biggest fantasy there is that he believes she's thinking about him when she's using that thing. Right. Men in the house, your girl has a sex toy, I promise you, it goes by a different name. Okay? Exactly. Now, my husband's name is Corey. Alright? But this right here is Lewis and Clark. Okay? I call my private times expeditions, you know what I mean? These two have discovered things no man has ever discovered before. Now, if your girl has a sex toy, name something else. Don't be mad. Don't be upset. The only time you should be concerned is if she gets another one and names it the same thing. If all your girl's sex toys are named Steven, it's time to look at her Facebook friends list. Steven's out there, guys. All right? He's at least one fake dick in the door. Now. Kent, I've been having a good time with you tonight, and uh, I'm going to share something with you personal, because I feel like I can trust you, and my husband's not here, okay? I, myself, have two sex toys at home. My husband knows about the first one. He don't know about number two. Number two is a little bigger, and I only use it when we're fighting, when I really want to fuck around, you know what I mean? I, uh, I named that one after his brother. Kent, you guys have been amazing. My name is Lynette Manning. I appreciate you. Thank you. What's that? You coming in? Look at this. I got me a white man. Woo! When that got a sugar daddy, she upgraded. I'll wait for the burnout. Give it up for Lynette, everybody. Yeah, no power. All right, we got Loon coming up next. Are y'all ready for Loon? Keep it going for Loon, everyone. Hey, give it up. That's Macy. She's got a very feminine name, but a very masculine head. Hell's Angels, what made you come here? The obvious? The cars? Who vapes from a Hell's Angel, man? That's like the least masculine thing you can do. Please don't fuck me up. I'm retarded. But give it up to all the kids. They've been learning a lot tonight. 
you know? Repeat everything you say tonight, especially you, you smiling. How old are you? Twelve. You with the girls yet? A little bit? He said a little bit. You in the black one? Don't answer that. He said a little bit. For the next five years, the answer is yes. You want to get into any college you want, the answer is yes. Yes, yes, yes. Native American, yes. But anyway, I went on a date recently with a woman. It doesn't happen often. And she kept on dropping things. I thought she was just clumsy, which is kind of cute. Turns out she had Parkinson's, which is adorable. She was like 65. We watched I Dream of Jeannie. She kept on calling it cinema. Super cute. I like your outfit. Cruella DeVille, I'm looking at you. Cheetah woman. How many cats you have to skin for that shit? All of them. All of them. Real classy answer. And then the date went so well, she took me back to her cottage afterwards. She poured me some of her aged wine from 1972, and it was delicious, like her. She put some berry mandalow on the record player. I told myself I was gonna mimic the cards as they go by, so. Uh, she put the bare metal on the record player, and we slow danced. Oh, Mandy, when you came and you gave without taking. And we danced towards her stair lift. I danced while she was lifted up the stairs, nice and slow. And after cleaning her dentures, I made her feel like she was 41 again. <laughs> it's always nice volunteering at the YWCA. <laughs> Now obviously that's a joke. The last day I went on was with the teenage girl. I was in high school. That's where you find them. You know the old dad threats to teenage boys? Whatever you do to my daughter, I do to you. It's not original, but effective. So I made sure me and my girl did a lot of anal. Because her dad kind of looked like Channing Tatum. And I'm a big fan of Magic Mike. Look at that one, that's a nice car, actually. That's cool, man. Where the fuck was that? No, Channing Tatum actually had a huge influence on my life. This Magic Mike movie actually convinced me to become a male entertainer years ago. My stage name was Dim Sum. The slogan was, you could get all this and Dim Sum. It was nice to finally learn what it was like to be a hot woman at a club. What I mean is, I learned that an Asian man is to a gay man as an Asian woman is to a man man. And gay guys hit on me all the time, and they would tip. You know, sexual harassment paid for my Honda. <laughs> Career tip, get into stripping. You look like you could... Do you, do, you, do you use the weight room yet? In your middle school? No? Get to it. Black women like big boys. Yeah. He nodded. He knows what it is. But old women do it for me, man. I love the way the overcooked skin just peels off the bone. Skin losing to gravity. That's what Neutrogena should be selling. He knows. Choo choo. Choo choo. I love the way old women look at me. Young women don't give a shit about me. Old women see me and their eyes light up. They ask me to help them with their groceries, crossing the street sometimes. Undressing, bathing. Maybe they don't ask you, but they ask me. And I do it. Beggars can't be choosers. I don't even remember what young, healthy pussy looked like. I'm only familiar with the nearly dying. In a bad market. You pick a niche. And you specialize. Hey, was that the light, or is that just the black man giving me the, the light? That's is it lonely being the single brother out here? No? You like the white women out here? No. He said no. Well, I love them. White power, baby. Hey, you guys have a good night. I appreciate it. Keep it going for Macy and his big ass head. Give it up for my big ass head. All right, give it up for Loon on that. Y'all having fun? That didn't sound like that. I got a wave. I got a kind of some good, some bad.
You're hard to please, I can already tell by your outfit. I saw that hat when I walked in, I was like, that's my type of girl. All right, we got Brian James coming up. So let's get some noise going for him, come on. Brian, come feel this. Hey, thanks everybody for hanging out. Fucking awesome. Yeah, my name is Brian, um, or as they call me at home, not my real dad. <laughs> now, I know we got a lot of parents out here, but how about step parents? Huh? Yeah, there's a fucking difference. You know, like, as a dad, I might tell the kids, keep it down. Your mom's trying to take a nap, you know? As a stepdad, it's kind of more like, go play. Your mom and I are going to take a nap, right? <laughs> we got to hear about these kids. I'm bored. Me too. Why do you think I want to go play with your mom, you know? <laughs> I know it's cliche, but they don't know how good they got it. Fuck, I can't even get these kids to do the dishes without going, where's my allowance? Fuck, I don't know, where's your real dad? <laughs> God damn. I see why somebody would sell their baby. You know? But not me, I took on some extras. I guess, uh... I see why you'd sell it as a baby. They fucking depreciate, all right? You know? At least when they're little, you can manipulate them into doing shit. You know, hand me that remote or Santa's not coming, right? You better behave or Jesus won't save your soul. Well, actually, that one works on a lot of adults, too. You know? I guess we won't go there. But I just came back from Vegas. Any gamblers out here? Yeah. Fuck, it's a, it's a crazy place, I couldn't keep up. <laughs> Man, Tuesday afternoon, some blonde bimbo doing blow off the back of the toilet. <laughs> Is it a stripper? Is it a hooker? No, it's Sheila from HR. <laughs> <laughs> crazy place, man. Yeah, I can't keep up. I'm just feel, I'm feeling old. Uh, last year, I became a grandpa. I, all right, thank you. I, I know you can't tell. I'm still pretty young, only 42, so I'm crushing on only grands. <laughs> no, there is no only grands. Can't ask your grandkids to help you set it up. That would be awkward, you know? Do you know, uh, now that I'm a grandpa, I've really been feeling mortality. You start looking around, you're evaluating things, you know? Should I replace the dresser before I go, right? But then I started staring at my lady. Hmm. She goes, what are you thinking? Fuck, I think we're going to keep the dresser. Right? I think we're going to keep the dresser. Because it's hard to find someone new. And I'm into a very specific type. I'm into epileptic girls. You know? I need somebody that will seize the day. <laughs> no, I, I would never be with an epileptic girl, sorry. Uh, I'd be afraid to get a blowjob. Fucking oh! <laughs> no, thank you. Like my grandpappy used to say, "Ain't nothing meaner than biting your wiener." <laughs> you know? Fuck. Grandpa's got the best wisdom. Shout out to grandpas. I feel like I'm wise now. You know, the wisdom comes in like mother's intuition, right? I start saying things like, first to ripen, first to rot." The early bird gets the worm. The early worm gets fucked. It's all a matter of perspective, right? Is that the purpose of the worm? To feed the bird or to eat and fertilize the soil? Because either way, the worm serves its purpose by purely existing, has free will. And that's why I don't pay my taxes. Fuck. I'd like to think I have free will too. I gave that whole speech to the cashier at Home Depot. <laughs> she was not inspired to give me the discount. I was like, for too long, you know? Now my kids won't go to Home Depot with me. They say I make a scene at the store. Like, fucking how the tables have turned, you know? It's hard to support, uh... It's hard to support this fucking, uh... We'll call it government, right? I can't, and money, I, I don't know, I'm a weird kind of, cr kind of criminal. Like, I don't like to pay my taxes, but I'll use my blinker on a dirt road, you know? Like, if I was a counterfeiter, I would just counterfeit dollar bills 
That'd make it rain at the church fundraisers, right? <laughs> All the raffle tickets, you know? If they want to complain it's not real, just tell them they have to have faith. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's a crazy world. The fucking media, the, the, you know, the TV is dangerous to watch. The social medias are dangerous. Nothing's telling us the truth. I've seen this commercial, and uh, you know, it's a commercial for this Durban Law Group. It's like, we're tough, we're human. We're reliable, we're human. We're human, we're human. Fuck, I wasn't questioning it before, you know? It's like, if you're running for office, you know, you're not going, you know, I want to be your president, and I'm not a pedophile, right? But Biden's running again. I mean, what do you, I don't know. I'm gonna fucking do. <laughs> Yeah, the guy's old, man. The guy's fucking old. But, uh... Yeah, the news. The fucking newscasters, I'll tell you what. They seem to get off on this shit. You know, anybody else think these newscasters are just totally sadistic? The way they report shit? Even the worst shit, they'd be like, you know... And in a grim turn of events, seven children murdered. Now here's Becky with the weather. She's like, thanks, Jane. You know, one thing these kids won't miss is this heat wave. Boy, what a scorcher. <laughs> well, let's be honest. Some of these kids are probably going somewhere a little warmer anyways, right? <laughs> thanks, everybody. I'm Brian. Keep it going for Brian James, everyone. Did he ask if y'all were gamblers out here? He doesn't understand car culture, huh? Y'all can't afford to gamble and have these nice ass cars. <laughs> All right, it's Richie Spinechala time. Woo yeah, give it up for Richie Spinechala. Come on, Woo let's get it going. All right, all right. Woo, it's hot, huh? Oh, I'm sweating like a hound dog shit in a peach pit up here. It's hot as hell. My name's Richie Spichala. For those of you that don't know, I am a jippy. That's what you get when you cross a Jew and a hippie. You get one of me. I don't know what it was about the hippie lifestyle that attracted my Jewish father. I'm assuming it was the free love. Not because he was cheap. Not because he was cheap. Because he was a freak. My dad likes to, he likes to get down. Both my parents, they're freaky, yeah. My dad considers himself the expert of sex. He is the rabbi of romance, is what he calls himself. He once caught me watching pornography. But you know what he did? He didn't even freak out. It was kind of weird. He actually sat down next to me, crossed his arms for a second, and then pointed at the television. It got uncomfortable, and he goes, you see that, Richie? That's what you want to be doing. Yeah. That's it right there. Uh, it's all about the posture. Look at his back. And hey, your mother loves when I do that one. That was kind of freaky, but I don't mind. You know, the, I got to explain. My bedroom was right next to my parents' bedroom, and they had a very active sex life. Like my entire life, every single night, on the same squeaky bed. It used to freak me out every night. It became like a white noise. I like I couldn't fall asleep until I heard it. On the same bed, up until about two weeks ago, my parents went and got a brand new bed. He's like, my dad's like, hey Richie, come over, check out my new bed. You're not gonna believe it. After 40 years, I go, I check this thing out. He got one of those adjustable kinds. Are you guys familiar? The front goes down, the back comes up, it does all kinds of twisty shit. And I look at it and I'm just thinking, oh my poor mother. What's gonna happen around this thing? But then I realized, hey, that's a very cool bed, right? And I'm like, hey, Pop, I really like your bed. I think I'm going to get one of those, too. Now, my Jewish dad, he's still got a little Jew in him. He's not all hippie now. He's still got that little thing in him. He's like, Richie, don't go spending that kind of money on these beds. I'm telling you, this is an expensive mattress. Save your money. I'll tell you what, you need a new bed? You can have our old mattress. <laughs> I know, right? That's disgusting. I don't want that crusty old bed. I, what am I going to do? Bring that home to my wife? Like, hey, babe, my parents gave us their old bed. And my wife, if you knew her, she would just walk up and be like, uh, oh. Uh, is, is this like a pillow top or something? 
And I'm like, nah, baby, it's not a pillow top. It's, uh, that's 40 years worth of my dad's dried chisholm. I don't know what else to tell you. You know what I mean? And like, I can't wait to have sex with my wife on that bed, right? What am I gonna do? I'm just gonna pound her into a big giant dust cloud of my once would-be brothers and sisters? And they're like floating around, they're in my face. I can see them getting in her eye already. And she's like, hey, is this, uh, Jesus, uh, is that baby powder? And I'm like, well, technically, uh, it kind of falls in the same, you could call it that. Let's just leave it there, right? No, for real, I can't bring that bed home, and I'll tell you why. My wife, she already thinks I'm cheap. Can you believe it? She does. Let me explain to you ladies here. We had a family vacation planned, okay? My wife, she wanted to go to Hawaii. And I'm like, hell no, that's too expensive. I'm not spending that kind of money. I don't think that makes me cheap, by the way. And my kids are like, well, we want Disney World. And I'm like, no. I looked around, I said, listen, we're in Washington State, no? It's Washington State, look at how beautiful it is here. So I took my family camping for vacation. No, great vacation, right? Uh, I, I get it. My family hated it. They hated it. I don't even understand why. Like, first of all, I picked the most popular camping spot I could find. It's uh, that one. It's uh, I five and Olive Way. Yeah. Have you guys seen that place? It's packed all the time. It's like ten, 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 ten. It must be the spot I'm new here. How the fuck do I know? <laughs> And they're so outdoorsy here in Washington, aren't they? Oh my gosh, I see them out there all the time, soaking up the sun, riding their bicycles. Like just the other day, I drove by them. You know, they were, they were all doing Tai Chi. It was great. They were like, uh... Well, I don't know if it was Tai Chi or yoga. I'm just saying they were into it. They're doing something. Give them a break. So I'm fat, you guys. I'm fat. It's not my fault, it's COVID's fault. I caught COVID in December, and all that's been happening since is I'm putting on the weight. I got man boobs. My belly is getting bigger and bigger. I can't stop it, and I'm frightened. The main reason I'm frightened, though, is because I got all these woke people on my social media. I hope there's no woke people. I see some colored hair do, so I'm catching them walking on thin ice here. But I can't stand the woke people. And you know what they're doing? They're saying shit on social media. If you disagree with them, they call you bad words like fascist. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So you see, one of the things they're saying, I should explain this. They're saying that a man can get pregnant. Can you believe that shit? Listen, I want to call bullshit, too but I don't want to get canceled. You know what I mean? And plus, I don't know shit about science, you know? I mean, well, when I think about, it, you know, December, that was about seven months ago, wasn't it? And now that I think about it, I'm not on any birth control whatsoever. And I haven't even had a period. Uh, these guys are right, I'm fucked, let's face it. I got some planning to do, right? Right? I'm just glad I didn't end up like one of those fat teenage girls, you know, that didn't even know she was pregnant till she's sitting on the toilet and it's like way too late. Like I'm not trying to shit out my kid. Like now that I know there's a live baby inside me, I think I want to have natural childbirth, you know, like my wife did. She did 15 hours of labor, you guys, my wife. Yeah, you don't have to clap. Yeah, fuck her, fuck her. <laughs> I'm gonna do 16, cause I'm sick of hearing about it. And I'm gonna take it like a man too. Like a pregnant man, but you get it, you get it. You get it. All right, listen up you guys, it's been a pleasure. My name is Richie Spichala. Thanks for coming to the car show. Thanks for supporting these guys. Good night.